Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a full series review of the TV series, The Last Kingdom. So, quick disclaimer before I head into this complete full series review of The Last Kingdom. I do not plan on having any sort of spoilers in this video, especially like anything related to like character deaths, you know, character deaths or big major plot arcs, you know, that are kind of pivotal and spoilery. I don't plan on having any sort of spoilers in this video. I'm going to try to be as just vague and general as I possibly can because the function of this video is to try and get people to watch the show if you haven't already. Uh, I, I freaking love this show and I really want to urge and convince other people to appreciate the show as much as I do. So yeah, let's get going about my thoughts and feelings on the TV series The Last Kingdom. So this is what you need to know. Uh, the Last Kingdom air, aired on Netflix and it had five seasons plus a movie called Seven Kings Must Die. And I'm probably going to kind of briefly talk about the movie in this particular video because uh, I, I don't think the movie is as good as the show, <laughs> to be quite honest, which is kind of disappointing and frustrating, but we'll kind of talk about that. So this is what you need to know about The Last Kingdom. Um, it is based off of the 13 book series by Bernard Cornwell, set in the 9th century, 9th century England, uh, following Uhtred of Bebenburg, who was born a Saxon but raised as a Dane as he fights for King Alfred of Wessex and tries to reclaim his ancestral home of Bebenburg. That's pretty much the bulk of this show, you guys. And all of there's just all these obstacles that get in the way from 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 Uhtred for, for being able to reclaim his home. <laughs> so, like I said, five seasons, forty six episodes, plus a movie, Seven Kings Must Die, all on Netflix. Uh, next, Netflix is is very accessible. So, if you've not seen the show, I don't know why you've not seen it. <laughs> it's very accessible compared to other streaming networks. I feel like. And yes, 46 episodes plus a movie may sound daunting, but I'm here to tell you it's well worth your time. Let's start here. I recently had a rewatch of the series because, uh, you know, House of the Dragon recently finished up and I'm just in a deep withdrawal from House of the Dragon. So I was like, I need to watch something, you know, kind of in a similar vein. To House of the Dragon. And Last Kingdom is definitely that. You got your epic battles, you got your, your crazy, complicated, complex characters, great world building, yada yada. Last Kingdom has it all. Action, romance, treachery, backstabbing, murder, it's all there. Plus, great historical attention to detail. I think. Uh, like I said, these are based off of the 13 book series by Bernard Cornwell, and to my understanding, Bernard Cornwell is considered kind of the best of the best when it comes to historical fiction. So I think the show, kind of just judging from how the show itself is, you know, I think the show definitely really pays attention to historical detail and like historical attitudes of, of the time. Yes, of course, there's probably historical liberties and yeah, the costume is probably not the most historically accurate on, on occasion, you know, but the thing is, it still gives you this really fantastic, excellent sense of being in this, this time and and place in the ninth century and how people possibly would have talked and behaved and, and what actions they would have taken and yeah, you know, just the culture. You know, the culture of the Saxon period and the whole issue and struggle between the Saxon versus the Danes and what that kind of all meant during this time period and how how the Danes especially were, were treated by the Saxons. So I guess let's start here. Um, I, as much as I love the show, you guys, from start to finish, as much as I love the show, I do think the first couple seasons are perhaps kind of the most slow in terms of, of pacing that you do kind of gotta, you gotta get through it. You know, you gotta get yourself mentally to get through. I think by the time you get to season four and five, especially, I don't think there is a single bad episode in four and five. I mean, yeah, there's no bad episodes really in the first three seasons, but I, I think they definitely kind of fill their pace on occasion that sometimes there's the episodes that do feel a little bit more meandering, a little bit more slow, um, but but not necessarily in a bad way, you know, because I think there's still a great time. Um, but yeah, at like season four and five especially, like it feels like the action and everything going on and the plot and all the character shenanigans, like it just feels like season four and five 
five and season four and five are just absolutely non-stop from start to finish and it's just like a, a roller coaster of things going on and what this show definitely excels at i think is kind of just the political backdrop of this world like i already mentioned you have everything going on this is the ninth century everything going on with the saxons and the danes and yeah uh, alfred the great his desire to to try and create a a, a single united england and uh, it is it's very ambitious of him and almost kind of naive and he wants to do this in his lifetime but he fears that he's probably never going to achieve this in his lifetime but it's like it's, that's his greatest life's ambition is to create a united england but how do you do that when the saxons and the danes absolutely just despise each other and they don't want to even try to get along and that's where Uhtred's character comes into play because he he was born a Saxon but through a series of events uh some things that went down he was captured by a group of Danes but he was brought into the family unit and he became part of the family so Uhtred has a very specific type of role in this story I think as being both a Saxon and, and a Dane he understands completely both ways of life and both ways of thinking and he really straddles that middle ground as he tries to balance back and forth between like what Alfred wants versus what like some of the Danish leaders want you know he goes back and forth and his loyalties are always constantly questioned by both sides and he just wants to do the right thing you know he's trying to do things that kind of serve him as well at the same time and what serves his family because all he wants at the end of the day is to get Bebenberg back because it was wrongfully taken from him he, that's all he wants but he has to kind of navigate both sides in order to get it uh, but at, at the same time he does he, he he does what he thinks is the right thing you know what he thinks is the right thing and sometimes he can be a little hit or miss about that so yeah the political elements of this of this show are wonderful they're super intense you have a lot of lengthy scenes of of like characters just in a room talking or sitting at a table talking and I've said before uh, I, I love shows where people are just sitting around tables and talking because it can just be so interesting and intriguing you know because you have a character over here thinking one thing and then a character over here thinking something completely different you know I love that sort of political drama and character or drama and another thing that the show excels at is definitely the huge epic battle sequences yeah guys and the thing is this show I think by the time you get to season four and five, the because they have a bigger budget by that point, the the scale of the battles is definitely way bigger and expansive. But even in the early seasons, even though the earlier seasons have smaller kind of battles and they don't last as long in the early seasons, the thing is the show still manages to do what it can with its constraints and with its budget to still make those kind of smaller battles feel super compelling and exciting and intense. So the rest of this video is primarily going to be talking a lot about the type of characters you're going to be getting on this show. Um, so speaking of the characters, save for a very small handful of characters, this show is not really, how, how to word this, because I don't want it to sound like I don't want it to sound negative because I don't really mean it negatively. Uh, this show is not really overly concerned about like totally fleshing out these characters except for like a small handful of them. Um, the show is definitely much more I think plot driven more than anything and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Like I said I don't want this to come across as negative because I freaking love this show. But the, the show it has a huge cast of characters. It, what, once you get through this whole show, there, there's dozens upon dozens upon dozens of characters that inhabit this world. And for the most part, a good huge chunk of them are kind of fairly one-dimensional in some ways. And again, I don't really mean that negatively, because like I said, this show is kind of more concerned with the plot. Um, you, There's only a small handful that really get wonderfully fleshed out and well developed and are full of, of depth and nuance. Uh, other than that, a vast majority of these characters, I, I, I almost kind of feel are more like archetypes. You know, they kind of serve their, their role and function and, and that's fine. You know, that's fine. Now, I will say this. I do think a good majority of the women on this show, the female characters, I do think the show, I think the show does a wonderful, magnificent job with showcasing various different types of of women and the different types of 
roles and spheres that women would have had during this time period. Because you have characters who are princesses, you have characters who are Danes, you have just random Saxon women, you have uh, women who are like nuns or abbesses. Um, there, there is, there's, there's a wonderful host of, of female characters on this show that all serve wonderful uses and functions, and um, I, I think this is the type of show, uh, to me, as a woman, I feel like this show knew how to use these women, you know, to make them compelling and interesting and um, not just, like, sex objects, you know, because that's another thing. There is hardly any nudity on this show, you guys. Like, both male and female, there is hardly any nudity. So let's talk about Alexandra Draymond, who plays our main character of Uhtred. This is what you need to know about Uhtred, you guys. You just don't call him Uhtred. I know I've been calling him Uhtred, because that's what you do, but you need to give him his due. He is Uhtred, son of Uhtred of Bevanbur, okay? He is going to remind you every damn week in the previously on that he is Uhtred, son of Uhtred, and he's trying to get Bevanbur, okay? <laughs> Uh, that, that's what you need, that's what you gotta prepare yourself for when you go into this show. Don't skip over the previously on, okay? For the love of God, don't skip over the previously on because Uhtred narrates the previously on in such a highly dramatic fashion and he always ends the previously on going, destiny is all, and it's so dramatic and I love it because Uhtred very much believes in destiny. He believes it is, it, it is his destiny to help Alfred and help the Danes and the Saxons and to, to get back his ancestral home. Destiny is all, you guys. <laughs> and Alexander Draymond, as Uhtred, son of Uhtred of Bebenberg, you guys, <laughs> let's give it, let's get it straight. Uh, Alexander Draymond, uh, he plays just such, he, his performance of Uhtred is just so gripping and powerful. Uh, he really commands the screen anytime he is on. Uhtred is a character who is very highly, I think, likable and relatable. He has his moments where he can be frustrating and you could be irritated and angry at him. Um, cause he does, he'll take certain actions and he'll say certain things that you're not going to agree with and that's totally okay because that is part of his character and his growth and development like i said this show has a very small cast of characters that actually get fleshed out and utra is definitely your number one top character get that gets fleshed out and is multi-dimensional and multi multifaceted and who, who is com complex and nuanced um yeah alexander draymond uh, just such a powerful performance. Uh, it, it, it's a very raw and gritty performance, uh, a very athletic performance as well, because Uhtred is constantly wielding a sword and jumping around on horses and fighting people. He's constantly bloody, for God's sake. Uh, the man is hardly ever clean. <laughs> and joining Uhtred on his quest to to reclaim Bebenbur, you guys, uh, he has his, his group of, like, of, of young guys, and at one point, there's this wonderful line said by a, a character, and he refers to Uhtred's young men uh, that join him. He, he refers to them as Uhtred's pretty boys. And you know what? That's not inaccurate. It is totally accurate. All of Uhtred's loyal guy companions, uh, they are all indeed very pretty. I'm not going to complain. I'm a woman. I love that. <laughs> so one of your first pretty boys is Citric, who is, you know what? Is he a Dane? He's a Dane, right? He's not Saxon. You know what? I'm having second thoughts now about the character of Citric. I honestly, for the love of God, can't remember if he's Danish or Saxon. Hmm. And I just had a rewatch and you would think I, re I would remember this. But let's go with Dane. I think Citric is a Dane. <laughs> he's a young guy. And then your next uh, character that joins the, the League of Uhtred, uh, you have Finnan, who is an Irish man. Uh, very sexy. Love that, that, love that Irish accent, you guys. And you got Osferth, uh, who is like a, a, a monk, and he is re referred to quite wonderfully and endearingly by Fennin as Baby Monk. We all love Baby Monk, you guys. Plus, Baby Monk, you guys, is uh, Aemond Targaryen over on House of the Dragon. Seriously, I'm going to show you some pictures. How does this guy right here on Last Kingdom, how does this guy on Last Kingdom go to this guy right here on House of the Dragon? Wow. Because <laughs> this guy right here? Aemon Targaryen, 
goddamn, I love this guy. <laughs> so yeah, Uhtred's pretty boys are definitely one of the highlights of this show. I, I love that dynamic that Uhtred has with each of these guys because it is, it's wonderfully comedic. These guys all have like some of the best lines of dialogue. And like I was saying, you don't have very many fleshed out characters on this show and I think unfortunately the pretty boys <laughs> uh none of them are very well fleshed out at all they all are kind of archetypes they're they're all kind of just there to either support Uhtred or kind of go against him on occasion if they think he's doing something foolish none of them have like really rich detailed backstories that you can like richly dive into and spend hours and hours contemplating on you know uh, they are they're very simple and basic and again there's nothing wrong with that because I still love these characters you know as simple as these characters are I love them and you know I was talking about the great cast of female characters earlier and I totally just neglected to even talk about any of the female characters so let's have a rundown here uh, we have Ethelfled who is uh, the daughter of King Alfred Ethelfled is probably Probably the most well-developed of the female characters for sure that you could spend hours probably analyzing her, her plot points. Uh, you have uh, the character of Brita who um, is kind of sort of a bit of a love interest for Uhtred on occasion but they kind of they kind of turn into rivals eventually. Uh, you have the character of Edith who doesn't even pop up until much later in the show but oh boy oh boy I love Edith you guys probably one of my favorite female characters. Uh, you have the character of Hild who is a female abbess hell yes. You have Ellswith who is the wife of King Alfred and you guys uh Ellswith, the wife of King Alfred, she's one of those female characters that you are kind of deliberately not supposed to like fairly early on in this show, but by the time you've reached like season four, she's one of the most compelling interesting characters because she kind of has this complete shift in character where she's all of a sudden very likable after you after you have spent season after you have spent seasons really hating her. <laughs> but I I love I love uh, Ellsworth, you guys. She's like pretty hilarious. And we got to talk about the great villains on this show. Uh, again, the villains are almost more kind of, I, I don't want to say stereotypical because they're definitely not like mustache trolling villains, you know. Um, I think the villains have a bit more nuance to them compared to some characters. But yeah, you have great villains like Ethelwold, who is the nephew of Alfred, who's, yeah, he's very disgruntled that he was not the next king of Wessex. So that probably some problems right there. Uh, you have Heston who is a who is a Dane leader. You have Ethelhelm who kind of serves in the later seasons as part of of uh, Alfred's court. You have Ethelred who at some point fairly early in the show does marry uh, Ethelfled. Boy oh boy Ethelred you guys he's played so wonderfully by uh, uh, Toby Regbo who I adored in the TV show Rain <laughs> where he played uh, King Francis and yet yeah, King Francis over on Rain, right here, this photo here. King Francis was such a lovable, nice character. And then over here on Last Kingdom, King Ethelred, mm -mm, totally despicable, but he's, he's nice to look at. And then another great villain was Erdwolf, uh, a really wonderful, nice looking man, but I think that's all really deliberately de deceiving because he has some deep dark things going on underneath the surface of all those good looks. And then as far as your supporting cast of characters, again, all of these characters don't have a lot of rich nuance, but they're all still just so utterly captivating and interesting. You have the character, well, Alfred, obviously. Well, you know what? Alfred. Let's talk about Alfred. Alfred the Great. Uh, Alfred, uh, he's trying to rule Wessex. He has this deep desire and ambition to create a united England, and you totally understand him, and you sympathize with him, and he's, he's, he's oftentimes very frustrating because he'll oftentimes go against our main character, Uhtred, and uh, of course we are sometimes siding with with Uhtred more than anything and so when, when Alfred is kind of being really petty and n n irrational about certain things you definitely are on the side of Uhtred and you, you're kind of just really pissed off and angry at Alfred like dude what are you doing <laughs> and yeah David Dawson who plays Alfred just oh what a magnificent performance you guys he plays King Alfred with just such stoicism and richness um, and he does so much with so little sometimes. Um, he, he doesn't have to do very much or even say very much, but David Dawson's performance is just so captivating and interesting. Uh, his body language, you know, you can read so much in his body language, which is, which is wonderful. I think that's a sign of a really great actor when, if, it, if an actor doesn't have much dialogue, 
if, if their body language is doing all of that, that sometimes can be much more interesting and compelling than, than actual words of dialogue. And I think David Dawson excels at that so wonderfully. And yeah, his relationship with Uhtred is, especially in the early seasons, is definitely one of the big highlights, one of the big relationships, you know, kind of this, this love it, hate it bromance that's going on between them. Uh, another great supporting character, you have Eldhelm, who is primarily a lot with Ethelred in early seasons. I adored Aldhelm. He's kind of one of those characters, you're not, you're not quite sure where his allegiances lie initially, but he, he, he goes to some really fascinating, interesting places eventually. Um, the character of Ragnar, who is kind of like a stepbrother, I guess, a stepbrother to, uh, to Uhtred. And then we have Edward, um, who is Alfred's son. Edward himself, um, he, he is, he's a son of a king, obviously, and um, he's a, a future king himself. And uh, he, Edward is kind of one of those characters, you know, he, he's a young man full of kind of, he's full of naivety and, and ignorance sometimes, and he has to really grow into his position and be worthy as the next king after Alfred. And yeah, I loved Edward, because he's kind of one of those characters that's so back and forth, like, do you love him? Do you hate him? <laughs> you have the character of Bianca, who is played so wonderfully by Ian Hart, you guys, Ian Hart from Harry Potter, you know, Professor Quirrell. <laughs> uh, uh, Bianca is, he's kind of the heart of this show sometimes. Uh, he, he's a religious man, uh, he's a priest. Um, he, he's, he always tries to balance out Uhtred, you know, lure, or lure Uhtred back to God, because Uhtred a lot of times is, is very godless <laughs> since he was raised by Danes. You know, he, he kind of believes more in the ways of the Danes more than the ways of the Saxons, and Bianca knew Uhtred as a very young boy, and is oftentimes really trying to steer Uhtred back in that direction of, of, of loving God and believing in God, you know? <laughs> And another man of faith is, is Father uh, Puelig. He was wonderful as well. I love him. And yeah, kind of another character, uh, Citriga. Uh, Citriga plays a huge role in the later seasons and has, has a thing uh, with uh, Uhtred's daughter, which is kind of sexy. I loved it. And yeah, I mean, that's a ton of characters I kind of just really, really quickly went through. And yeah, I, I, I kind of quickly mentioned Uhtred's daughter there at the end. Yeah, Uhtred has a bunch of children kind of over the course of the show who all get randomly introduced and in crazy ways. Uh, there is, there's a host of characters I didn't even mention in this video, you guys. The list is never ending. I can't stay here forever. <laughs> this video is already long enough as it is. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it on my thoughts and feelings on The Last Kingdom. I adore the show. I love the show. I think it's very easily re rewatchable, and it just has everything. If you're looking for great action sequences, it's there. If you're looking for some great romance, it's there. If you're looking for c compelling, complex characters, it's it's sort of there to some degree for, for some of the characters. Not all of them, but for some of them. Um, yeah, the historical detail and the backdrop and the political intrigue, it's definitely the huge thing why you watch this show. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely curious your thoughts and feelings on this show. If you've seen it, if you love it, if you hate it, if you hate it, I need to know why you hate it. Let's talk. <laughs> um, and yeah, did this review, like I said at the start of this video, the aim of this review is to get people who have not seen the show to, to push those people to watch the show. Because if you've not seen it yet, I really truly think you're missing out. Um, especially if this is your type of genre, you know, like I said, if you love things like Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon or Vikings, um, you know, things like that, you know, kind of really interesting world, world building type historical or even fantasy, you know, because fantasy can sometimes can be in that realm of historical fiction, sort of, you know, if you love epic things like that, um, I, I think this is definitely going to be your cup of tea. So you guys, that is it for my thoughts and feelings on The Last Kingdom. As I said, uh, comment down below if you've seen this show or if you plan on seeing it sometime in the future. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye guys.